Today, we'll take a look at the Snapton SP510, a 2.7K camera on a foldable GPS guided drone, all coming in at under $200. We'll give this quad a full look over, get it out, fly it, see how the flight characteristics are, see how the camera works, test the app, and see if it's worth the money. Snapton emailed me and asked whether I wanted to take a look at this drone and I thought, well, I think I would be doing my viewers a service by checking it out because most of these GPS guided drones are crazy expensive or generally just not really good. So we're going to see how this one works out. Out of the box, you can see the resemblance to the DJI Mavic series right out of the gate. It's kind of neat foldable style. It's Pretty plasticky in the hand, pretty light duty, but it does seem like it has a little bit of flex in it, not the really brittle stuff, so it might just do the trick. This thing has a pretty cool feature set, 2.7K camera, GPS, one key takeoff, and a decent sized battery. All in all, this should work pretty good. So everything came packaged just wonderfully, no issues there. Battery buried in here is a pretty cool little unit, much like the DJI as well. One touch uh, battery level indicator, and then USB charging for both the onboard battery and the transmitter. This I like, not having an external charger is just wonderful, so simple. Camera is on a swivel that's controlled by a, basically a servo or a gear drive inside. You shouldn't push it like I did there, but no harm done. This worked out fine later on. You get some spare parts, screws and props in the box, which is wonderful as well. You should have these because I imagine they'd be hard to, to come across. I don't think I'm going to break any very often. As you'll see later, uh, it took a couple of tumbles and no problem there. So it seemed pretty tough. Quick look at their website. They make it look pretty impressive. Lots of cool pictures, cool situations, mountaintops, beaches. We'll see if this thing lives up to the hype, but uh, they make it look pretty promising. We're gonna need the controller. Gimbals feel really good on this. I really like the flip up phone holder that it has. Uh, it fits my uh, iPhone XR, no problem. Uh, it has the scroll wheels on the top here, one for your speed and one for your camera angle. Just good little system. Uh, the transmitter actually feels really good. Instruction book in the box, you're going to need this. There's some references in here for calibration of gyros and accelerometer that uh, I don't find intuitive at all. You have to hold a stick position and there is no provision in the app for setting these. You can't do a calibration initiated from the app. You have to initiate it with stick commands, which is absolutely foolish in my opinion. I, the app kind of sucks that way. So you need to keep this, uh, this reference handy. In the app store, I was able to find their app, no problem, download it, install it, had no issues whatsoever. It was pretty painless really do love the USB charging. Just, just a great idea. So here you can see we're taking about an amp here, no problem. So that's pretty good. A little over an amp at times, so this should charge up pretty quickly. Transmitter, same deal. Plug it in, takes charge right away, no issues. A little bit less of a charge right here, about uh, oh, 300 milliamps thereabouts. Working pretty good, no issues. Pretty excited to get this out and test at this stage. I haven't flown it yet. It's still in one piece. It just looks mean, so pretty happy. And surely someone will ask. Here it is, battery in on the scale, 265 grams. So over the 250, just by a bit. I gave it the treat of a brand new SanDisk SD card so I'd have no issues with the video recording and I could give you guys an accurate representation. So into the belly it goes. Although these two can't be directly compared and shouldn't, I have to point out the resemblance between this and my DJI Mavic Air. 
They are remarkably similar in a lot of respects, and I'm pretty sure that's intentional. The form factor is well accepted these days, and well, my Mavic Air, I absolutely love it. The, the thing just performs, it just works wonderful. So side by side, these things, it's pretty clear that uh, who they were shooting for and a little bit of a design um, tip of the hat, so to speak. Nothing wrong with that. And unfolded, same thing. A lot of resemblance there. We'll call it a tip of the hat. No, no ill will. The two are completely different leagues, and we'll see in the performance. Uh, they aren't even in the same galaxy. So let's check it out. Alrighty, I brought this thing out to my model field when I was testing out a couple of my aircraft and thought, well, what a great place to, to set it up. We're far away from any radio sources or any, any other interference, no buildings around, just an open field. So go ahead and we'll set it up. The calibration procedure is not intuitive, as I mentioned before. I had to refer to the instructions and mess around with the stick commands a little bit. And eventually I was able to succeed and get it to calibrate. It seemed to be, uh, as per the instructions, the light flashing did, uh, did even out, did match the instruction book. So uh, again, they don't make sense to me. Uh, I would have rather see it simpler, kind of a go or a no go, but Anyway, we'll give it a try. All right. Maiden takeoff from the short grass here. No issues with prop interference or anything like that. It armed, it took off. It was pretty stable, not, not horribly stable, but stable enough at this stage. Wonder. Hey, she found her home now. There, it finally settled in, pretty stable. Seems to be performing now without too many issues, so I'm able to move the camera a little closer. And seems to be GPS locked, doing as it should. likes to wander to the right. Oof, what is that about? That should be a little better. crap uh, I'm able to hover around the controls are acting just a little bit funny at times but it seems to be stable enough it's reacting it's following my inputs uh, it does act a little bit foolish now and again and we'll see in a moment that gets much worse I did another calibration routine, both cals, and decided to take it out again. Uh, the performance actually got much worse this time. The stability is just 
non-existent at times and it hits what seems like a geofence just a few meters away and kind of wigs out. Uh, it's not set to beginner in the app. I had moved it to advanced and sometimes it seems to be fine and sometimes it rocks back and forth and acts pretty crazy. I'm not entirely sure what's wrong. I told it to come home. That part seems to work perfect. <laughs> Well, it returned. So there's no indication of anything being wrong. Low transmitter battery, but it's acting like it's geofenced, but beginner mode is off. enough of that and this is some of the raw flight video you can see the stability is good and then bad but this gives you an idea what to expect from the camera it is it is 2.7k uh, the quality and the colors remind me a lot of a 808 keychain camera um, there is a lot of jello in the shot. It definitely could uh, could do with some prop balancing, which I think will be hard with these props. I'm not sure whether I, I could probably balance them by weight between each other. I guess that won't be a problem, but I can't balance them like a normal prop on a on a spin type balancer. But I'll I'll maybe give it a try if I find some time or decide I want to give this thing another go. A bit underwhelming, the camera. With a bit more downward angle away from the sky, it's a little less washed out and a little bit better colors. But as you can see, the, the stability is just all over the shop here. Uh, it would be possible to stabilize some of this in post, I suppose, and probably okay for a downward angle straight down like this if you were just looking for say a lost airplane or some other kind of a, a overhead observation but mm, stability not this thing strong point my transmitter battery perpetually says it's low even though it's charged so that's that's clearly defective in my unit either the app is messed up or most likely the battery circuit isn't right in this transmitter you can see it went from red to orange there but uh, the phone app is is really good uh, other than unable to calibrate from the app the rest of it does function really really well it has a really solid video downlink it's intuitive controls um, no issues i'm actually pretty impressed with the phone app it's easy to transition between the map view and and the uh the live stream view as you can see but then we're back to the same problems with the flight envelope of the actual quadcopter in this case you can see it become unstable this is not me working with the controls this is just the quad completely wigging out and becoming unstable and eventually flying into the tree itself no stick commands from me here's an external view of that if series of events hands off the sticks here and you can see it sort of starts out with these circular trying to hold patterns the beeping is really annoying that happens anytime you're running the camera totally foolish and then you can see it start doing this all on its own. This is hands off the controls and eventually it decides to gain altitude and go into the tree. Uh, this is not good. Not a good situation whatsoever. Now the remote batteries come back up. I ran yet another calibration, decided, well, Give this thing one last try. And this is the stability right after takeoff. This thing completely uncontrollable this time around and completely flew away with my hands off the sticks and thankfully crashed into the neighbor's tree where I was able to recover it. 
uh, there's a major problem here and I don't know what it is. Well, so what do we think about the Snapton? I think it uh, has some problems and I'm really hoping that one of you people out there can help me out by putting a comment down below and coming up with the cure. I've been through the settings in the app all the way through enabled uh, beginner and advanced mode and back and forth and different geofencing limits and I had no luck. Um, I can't resolve that stability issue. It just goes into what looks like maybe gyro drift and then compounds. The PID loop gets worse and worse and worse to the, with the really reaction. Uh, just the instability just compounds to the point where it becomes uncontrollable and in one case flew away. Uh, completely uncontrollable. So um, that leads me to believe that something, we may have a bad uh, gyro or accelerometer or something. I'm not sure. But uh, I'm hoping one of you guys has the solution out there. So far, uh, I don't think I can recommend this, at least not this particular unit. I'll, uh, I've reached out to the manufacturer and we'll see if, uh, see if they can come up with any ideas. But for now, this is as it came to me. So um, we'll give it another try if, uh, if we come up with any solutions or um, neat tricks to make this thing work. But uh, hopefully we can. Cheers, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Click a thumbs up if you did. Support me on Patreon if you like more of these videos or want some behind the scenes content or some behind the scenes mailbags. Thanks, uh, thanks to all my Patreon supporters. You guys make these videos possible. See you next video. Cheers.